Here we go. A little clip here for you, my friends. Oh, oh, who is the guy that's sitting right in front of me? It's the guy that you just saw in the uh, the little laneway there uh, with all the ossuaries and, and the boxes, and his name is Simka Yagbovich. How are you? <laughs> nice, nice to be to here, man. Nice to be here. Right on. You, you had to know, obviously, when, when, when you decided this is what, where you were going to go with this film and these boxes that you found, that there was going to be this huge reaction, right? Was well, you, <laughs> this is unchar uncharted territory. I expected a big reaction, but you just never expect a tsunami like that. So it's been amazing uh, in terms of world attention. The amazing thing is most of the people who reacted haven't seen the film. Do you think you found the bones of Jesus? I think there's a compelling argument to be made, based on the evidence, that this tomb that was found not by me but by archaeologists, mm -hmm. I refound it because they left it, they thought that a building went up over it and destroyed it. We refound it. We used robotic cameras to put them down and, and found this tomb live on camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I think that there's compelling evidence that this is the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth, of his mother Mary of Mary Magdalene, of his brother Josie, and of his son Judah, because those are all the names that are inside the tomb on these bone boxes or little stone coffins. And a big part, I have seen the first half of the film, and a big part of it is just the likelihood of this collection of names being together in the same family tomb. Well, that's the thing, you know, a lot of the people who dismiss this story has been in the shadows for 27 years. For the first 16 years, um, I read a lot of stuff in the internet, the academics say this should all be come out first in an academic journal. And that would have been wonderful, except for the six, first 16 years, nobody wrote a word about it. Well, nobody even that? knew anything about it. it, it no, they, they found this. Now, when they found this the first time, was there talk that perhaps this was the family no, tomb? No, because they dismissed it as statistically not relevant. You know, it's like Dick, Tom, Harry, it's not important, it's common names in first century Jerusalem. But, you know, I can hardly add and subtract. So when I have a... When I, have a st I almost failed you high school. You shouldn't be telling people this. You're, just telling, you're telling them you found the tomb of Jesus. Because, because, and that's an important point. I'm a good journalist. Uh -huh. I'm not a statistician. These archaeologists who dismissed this tomb as statistically irrelevant are also not statisticians. They don't, and yet they're pronouncing, you know, it's common names, common names. Well, you know, George may be a common name, but how many people in the city of Toronto have a father with the same name as you, mm -hmm. a mother with the same name as you, and a sibling with the same name as you. I bet you don't know one other family with the same cluster of names. Okay, so Toronto is a much big, bigger place than Jerusalem at the time of Jesus. The odds of finding another family with the same cluster of names, well, I actually went to a statistician. I didn't rely on archaeologists. And Professor Feuerberger at the University of Toronto, uh, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, says 600 to 1, based on the evidence that the archaeologists supplied him, that this is the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth. And you know that numbers aside, it doesn't really matter when you're talking about something like Jesus and, and a real basis for which, Christianity, because emotion will take over. Which is fine. 601, maybe it's the one. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it is. Our, we're, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a journalist. We brought people into the tent. Now I think the world has paid attention. There are going to be more statisticians weigh in, more archaeologists, this kind of silence, you know, this, where this thing has been sitting in the shadows. How did you get into this? Because it's been found before, right? So how did, how did it come to you where you're like, Let's, I'm going to go take a look at this? Well, because what happened, they found a tomb. That's a fact. I didn't, I didn't make up this. I mean, there's a tomb was found halfway between Jerusalem and Bethlehem mm -hmm. in 1980. Sound familiar? And uh, in this tomb, there are all these cluster of names. A Jesus, two Marys, mm -hmm. a Josie, exactly the nickname given in the Gospel of Mark for the brother of Jesus, and so on. So... They were warehouse, like kind of Indiana Jones, all sitting in his warehouse for all these years. I made a film a few years back on an ossuary, a bone box that made a lot of, got a lot of attention. First, because they said it's real, then they said it's fake, as part of the inscription is fake, called James, brother of Jesus, uh, brother, uh, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. While I was interviewing this archaeologist in this huge warehouse, he said, Why are you interested in this? And they were very dismissive. I said, well, because it could be the first archaeological evidence of Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, that's, he goes, well, why don't you deal with the man himself? And I said, what are you talking about? So well, right over here, we have a Jesus son of Joseph. So he took me to this ossuary, and I'm looking. 
And then I felt I must be stupid for being excited. Maybe every other ossuary in this warehouse says Jesus, son of Joseph. And I, he said, I said, why isn't this important? And he said, the common names. And I said, how many Jesus, son of Joseph have you found out of all these thousands of ossuaries? One. Oh, okay, that's pretty common. So I, and I said, who was buried next to him? And he said, I'm afraid to tell you because I tell you you're going to jump to conclusions. And I said, who? Well, two Marys. So I jumped to conclusions. Well, that's the key, right? Two Marys. One of them is Mary, his mother, and then the, the speculation is the other is Mary Magdalene, who they say is also his baby mama, which was a significant thing, right? The mother of his child. Well, there, was, there was a baby, there was a child buried next to them called Judah, son of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we, we, did, we just didn't do archaeology and statistics. We also did DNA. We brought like CSI technology to bear on this story. Mm -hmm. And they were able, the scientists, to extract from tiny little chips mitochondrial, I can't believe I'm saying this, you know, DNA of Jesus, but the, 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 they were able to extract tiny, uh, from these little tiny chips at Lakehead University, mm -hmm. Paleo DNA Lab in Northern Ontario, DNA from the Jesus son of Joseph and from this other Mary, Mariamne, which is the name that Mary Magdalene is known, you know, in tradition and to this day in the Greek Orthodox Church. So they, they checked them against each other. Now, if they're buried next to each other, you're in a family tomb, you're either related by blood or marriage. So if the DNA matched, that means they're brother and sister or something like that, mother and child. It didn't match. It did not match. No, it didn't. Did you go to James and say, James, I found, James Cameron, I found the tomb of Jesus? Like, how did you sell this? Is, I, I said, I, those were exactly my exact words. And, and what did he look at you and said, said, I've already made Titanic. I don't need another one of these. Like, what, like big Yeah, movie. I said, you're JC, his JC. It's a perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. What, he's amazing. You know, one of the things that hurt me is to read that he's doing it for the... James Cameron does not have to make documentaries to make money. No. Okay? He doesn't do anything to make money anymore. Exactly. So he didn't take a penny, actually. Everybody's saying he did it. He didn't take one penny, even his fee as an executive producer. What he did is he was the skeptic. He always forced me to go back to the drawing board. When I interviewed two professors, he said interview three. When I went to one statistician, a statistician he said go to four. Mm -hmm. So he was the executive producer, Felix Golubov and I, and Rick Bianstock. We worked together. We had an amazing team. And, you know, all we want to do is put this, take this story out of the shadows and bring it into the light. Uh, nice to see you, Simco. Thank Great you Great to much. be here. Right it's on. a pleasure. All right. Lost to Jesus. Still lots more to come on the program tonight. Uh, maybe we'll find somebody else's team.